now. So I'm Lindsay at the Longmeadow Adult Center. We have um, Bay Path University. We have Alexis is their clinical instructor at um, the occupational therapy department. So she's here with us with a few students. So I'll let her introduce everyone. Hello, I'm Alexis. Uh, thank you, Lindsay, for um, having us. Sorry, Alex and I are actually in the same room, so you <laughs> probably hear it echoing. Um, so I have two students on here with me that will be presenting. And so they are just about to finish their second field work and um, finish the Master of Occupational Therapy process and graduate. So it's really exciting for them, especially since they had a little bit of a delay. So on here is Allison and Alex. 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 It looks like we have a couple like others, have a couple on, others here on here joining us. Joining us. Hello. It always takes a minute for the sound to kick in. <laughs> Hi, Heidi. Hi. Welcome. We, we just got started. Thanks for being here. Can you hear us? All right. I think, I think they can. All right. So I think we'll um, just get started and if any other folks join us, um, we can kind of fill them in. Um, but the topic today that they are going to talk about is self-advocacy. So we hope that you can leave this presentation learning some skills for self-advocacy um, just to manage your own overall health and perhaps you're on here to learn some skills for another individual where it, it may be a spouse um, or perhaps a child. Um, feel free to ask any questions as they go along with the presentation and thank you again for joining us today. So I'll let the students take over. All right, and then I'm gonna just share my screen. So. All right. And this is all right so today as Lexi mentioned um, the title of our presentation is advocating for your health um, and we'll be talking about the concept of self-advocacy uh, so who are we <laughs> you might be asking so my name is Alex and I am an occupational therapy student at Bay Path University getting my master's. As Lexi mentioned, um, myself and Allison, we only have three weeks left until we graduate. Uh, in that case, we will then begin studying and sitting for our boards uh, to become licensed uh, occupational therapists. And as Alex mentioned, I'm Allison and we are very excited to be here today presenting for you. So today, these are some of the topics we'll be going over. Uh, what is self-advocacy, what is and is not. Creating a plan for medical appointments and some tips and strategies. As Alexis mentioned before, we will have time towards the end too, if you don't wanna ask questions during the presentation, there will be some time at the end if you need any more clarification or any questions answered. So if anyone has any other topics they were learning or they were planning on learning out of today's presentation, you can feel free to share. Um, but if not, we will just continue. All right. And feel free to use the chat box if you think of anything as we're going through. Um, we can answer it as we go or save the questions for the end and make sure we get to um, any questions that might come up. Um, so just to start off, self-advocacy is the ability to articulate one's needs and make informed decisions about the support necessary to meet those needs. 
So again, what is self-advocacy? It's to be our best self-advocates. Advocates. We need to know ourselves, which includes knowing our strengths and our weaknesses. Um, knowing yourself is step one in knowing your needs. It's also important for you to understand the rights and responsibilities you have as individuals. And it's also very important to have a good support system with you that can help along the way in the process and being able to take control of your own life. And if anyone wants to share now, you can share uh, one need you would want to work on being a self-advocate for yourself. If not, you can feel free to share it on a piece of paper. Yeah, so just hold on to that thought um, if you don't want to share and think about that throughout our presentation. So again, self-advocacy is negotiating and knowing your needs, whether that's in medical appointments or just advocating in general. Being able to ask questions, whether it's to other individuals or to doctors, and then speaking up for what you think is important. What self-advocacy isn't is not speaking up and letting someone else kind of speak up for you, so not necessarily knowing your direct needs and being questioned by other individuals. So one um, concept within this whole idea of self-advocacy that we wanted to touch upon is called the doorknob question phenomenon. So what is it and how can we avoid doing it? Because as soon as I learned about this, I was you know, surprised there was a name for it, but also thought, you know what, this happens almost every time I go to the doctor. Um, so no matter how well versed you are in your situation, we often get into the doctor's office and all of a sudden they start asking us questions and we don't even remember our own name or date of birth. Um, and this phenomenon tends to happen. That's called the doorknob question. So this is where you go through the whole appointment and as the doctor is leaving the room, to finish the appointment, their hands on the doorknob, they ask you if you have any other questions. And at that point, you bring up something like a concern about your health that you may have been experiencing that really should have been brought up earlier in the appointment. But what happens in the healthcare field is by the time the doctor is about to leave the room, the time for the appointment has already run out and they won't really have time to address this question that should have been addressed earlier in the appointment. And you'll have to go through the whole process again, right, of scheduling that appointment. You know, the doctor says, well, that's something we need to look into. Why don't you come back and we'll do some tests or we'll look into that further. They maybe don't have time for it that day, um, but they, they do want to look into it, but you have to start that whole process over of getting an appointment. As we know right now, that's not the easiest thing to do immediately. Um, so how can we avoid not bringing up important medical questions until the end of the appointment like that? Our suggestion is to create an action plan for your appointment. Um, so go into the appointment knowing your goals for the appointment, the symptoms that you're experiencing, the concerns you want addressed, the questions you want answered, numbers for the doctor and research. So numbers for the doctor would be um, if you track something like uh, if you wear like a glucose monitor or if you keep track of your heart rate or if you keep track of your blood pressure um, and the numbers seem like something you're a little concerned about, bring those numbers um, maybe from the past week. Just say, this is what it looked like for the past week. This is why I'm concerned. If you have it written down, then it's easier to remember that information and show the doctor like, I've been keeping track of this and this is why I'm concerned about it. Um, and then research, we'll touch on this a little bit more in depth uh, later in the presentation, um, but trying to stay informed about something that you know is going on or you're experiencing is always a good idea. Of course, there's some like red flags of when it comes to doing your own research. There's a lot of information out there and not all of it is trustworthy. Not all of it is good information. Um, so we do have some tips on how to look for good information. Um, but if you go to the doctor and you say, you know, I'm experiencing this thing, I found some information on these, like through these resources that I trust, um, would you be open to looking into this further with me? Um, the doctor often is pretty receptive to that. Um, again, if 
it's something they're not receptive to and you feel like you're not being heard in your appointment, the big takeaway, I guess, would be that there is, we, most of us living in like Western Mass or Northern Connecticut have access to a lot of different doctors. So, you know, if you feel the end goal of this presentation would be to say that if you feel like your needs aren't being met, you know, don't be afraid to look into switching doctors. Um, but yeah, we'll touch on the research thing specifically in a little bit. However, we did want to share this planning sheet that we created with you. Um, so this was a resource that we created that we'd be happy to share with uh, anyone who is interested. Our email will be at the end of this presentation. You can shoot us an email and we would be happy to send this along to you or if you want to put your email in the chat function. Um, this is just a really simple sheet that you can print out that outlines everything that was on the last slide as well as has a spot for some more information. So at the top you could put your doctor's name, the office address, the date and time of the appointment, and then there's space to fill out all that other information. So if you wanted to track some numbers for the doctor, you would do that right on this sheet. Um, if you knew there were some questions you did not want to leave the appointment without having answered, you could write those down. Um, concerns you want to address, symptoms, goals, everything we had on that last slide is right here in a nice little doc that we could send you that you could print off and fill in, um, you know, whenever you're thinking about the appointment. So whether it be the day before or if it's something you've been tracking for a while, a week or two before, um, we would be happy to share this with you so that you may bring this to your next appointment and hopefully avoid having that doorknob phenomenon, ha phenomenon happen. So here are a couple quick tips that can help during any doctor's appointments. The first one being taking notes, whether this is taking them down in your phone if you have an, um, the notes app, or even keeping a notebook with you in your bag or just in your pocket. That way you have a list of items that you wanna discuss with the doctor when you get in. And again, like Alex said, trying to avoid that doorknob phenomenon. You also wanna write it down just so you don't forget what you wanna ask. So having that um, appointment planning sheet can really be helpful and beneficial during those visits. The next one is having um, the doctor chart anything that they want refused that you think may be um, something that you wanted to look into, whether that be a screening or a testing you wanted completed. Ask them to note that refusal in the chart. That way it's on file for you and if it needs to be brought up again, they have it already documented. The next one is calling ahead. So this is when you're scheduling your appointment, you can make, um, ask them to make note of specific requests. One example is being if someone had an eating disorder and they did not wanna get weighed um, due to that. So you would ask the receptionist when calling ahead that when scheduling the appointment, that's something that wants to be um, discarded from the appointment or the physical. And when you get to your appointment, that's something you wanna reconfirm, whether it's with the front desk or the um, nurse practitioner. And if there is a time where they ask that person with the eating disorder to get on the scale, they can politely decline unless it's mandatory for a medication or intervention that they will be receiving that day. Uh, the fourth tip is to keep records of your own medical information. So oftentimes, oftentimes we go between a variety of different specialists and doctors and they don't always have the ability to access information from another specialist or another doctor. So it can be very helpful um, oftentimes to just ask the doctor to print out some information or to go over everything that they talked about in the appointment, have that piece of paper or have those handouts that they provide to you and then keep them organized in a safe space at home. So maybe, I don't know, along with some other important documents that you might have, like I know in my house we have a filing cabinet where we keep tax returns and just every important piece of paper that we have. Um, and that might be a good spot to start a file for yourself of medical information. This way, again, just going back to maybe an extreme example, but if you were 
thinking you might need to see a specialist you hadn't seen before or interested in switching doctors and not sure how quickly your information would be um, provided to a new doctor or specialist, you could bring some information with you of just, you know, here's everything I've had from the past five to 10 years. These, this is all the blood work I've had done. Here were the results. Here's my vaccinations. Um, you know, again, just empowering yourself to be the person in charge of your health in that way. So even though you might not know what's going on or you don't have the answers, at least you have like a glimpse of your medical history at your fingertips. Um, and then again, we come to that topic of research. Uh, so again, you have to be very careful using the internet for research purposes. Um, for example, many people will type in their symptoms. The first thing that pops up is a website called WebMD. And next thing you know, you've diagnosed yourself with a termini terminally ill disease, which sounds a little bit over the top, but I, you know, I think people tend to do this and then it results in a lot of anxiety about what's going on when in reality, it's probably not what's happening with your health at the time. Um, so we wouldn't recommend, you know, the quick Google searches into something like WebMD, which can just, you know, you, you have an itch on your arm and it's a little red and that goes from zero to a hundred really quick using a website like that. Um, something that you could use, uh, Google does have a feature called like Google Scholar, um, which is where you can find evidence-based research um, and you can manipulate the search pretty easily just to be within the last 10 years. Um, so if you're looking for like well thought out research, that's a good place to start. And again, that was Google Scholar. Um, again, if you're experiencing some symptoms and they sound like something, I think, you know, we can easily relate this to what's going on with COVID a sore throat can all of a sudden in our heads go from just like allergies to being diagnosed with COVID. So again, just not letting the information on the internet get the best of you and overwhelm you, but just sharing that with your doctor, like, hey, you know, I'm having these symptoms. Um, I am worried that it could be something like COVID, but of course, you know, I'm also aware that the allergens are really high during this time of year, um, but it would make me feel better if I could get in sooner just to get that COVID test to be sure that that's not what I'm experiencing. Um, so just, just a reminder to do some research, but take all the information that you find on the web with a grain of salt, um, because oftentimes it can be a bit overwhelming. And then another tip we wanted to share um, that you may or may not know about was um, a health a healthcare advocate. So I don't know if everyone is in like the Long Meadow East Long Meadow area, but uh, for Massachusetts, there's a website that I have right at the top here. So mahealthcareadvocates.org. Um, in some cases, it's a volunteer organization, and then in other cases, it is something that you would have to pay a fee for. Uh, but what a healthcare advocate does is helps you understand the diagnosis and explore your treatment options. They can come to doctor visits with you so that it's another person hearing the information, taking notes on the information, uh, just in case you feel again overwhelmed by the information you're provided and having a tough time remembering exactly what was said in the appointment, they can assist you with that. And then they can also assist you with probably everybody's least favorite part of dealing with the doctor is health insurance and medical billing. I can be really convoluted and confusing. So having someone who can help you navigate that could be a benefit as well. Um, so again, this some people operate in this role uh, on a volunteer basis and then other people, it is something that you'd have to pay for. Um, but just something we wanted to make sure everyone was aware of, because if it sounds like something that could be helpful to you, uh, we would definitely encourage you to look into that a little bit more. And then a uh, healthcare advocate sort of falls under this category of memory strategy. So how can we remember what we were told in an appointment? So maybe you have a spouse or a child or a good friend who you trust enough to bring to the appointment with you to write that information down. The healthcare advocate might be more of the situation if there's someone that you, if you want an outside party, if you don't feel comfortable with a family or member or a friend, uh, being this person, that's where the healthcare advocate might come in. Um, but another idea would just to 
be to bring someone to the appointment with you so that it's just, you know, two sets of ears listening to the information rather than just having to rely on what you've heard and, you know, leaving the appointment again, feeling like I can't remember what they said about X, Y, or Z. Um, that being said, if it's not a possibility to have anyone come with you, now many doctors are using the online patient portal um, or you can always call, but the patient portals are really nice because you can log into um, a website where all your information is private, but you can pull up things like your vaccination list or lab results from blood work you may have done. Um, and you can also often contact your doctor directly through that patient portal. And sometimes it's much easier to get in contact with the doctor that way than calling and waiting for a call back because we are all well aware that the doctor is very busy. Sometimes we wait long enough when we're in the office. So waiting for a call back can be a difficult thing. Um, often you can put a little note in your file on the patient portal just to say, I can't remember what you told me to do with this um, new medication that you prescribed or what the purpose of it was and they can get back to you. It's more like an email format, so it could be a bit quicker. Um, but again, if, if that's not something your doctor offers or something you're comfortable with, um, you know, you, just empowering yourself to call the doctor and say, I really need a nurse or the doctor to call me back because I have a feeling that like, I didn't get this quite right, this piece of information from the meeting and I just wanna talk through it again with someone. And then um, something that I myself don't even think of all the time is the pharmacist. So if you are prescribed a new medication, uh, again, just empowering you to talk to the pharmacist. Like, I'm not entirely sure why I was prescribed this medication over another, um, or I'm really worried about this medication. All I've heard are negative side effects and I can't be sure that it's something I'm like really comfortable taking. Can you help me better understand the side effects or you know, how to take this medication. Um, sometimes we don't give pharmacists enough credit. They've gone through a lot of schooling to be in the position they're in. Um, and I'm talking about the actual pharmacist, you know, the techs at the pharmacy can be helpful, but if you have a question that they can't answer, they'll help, you know, make sure that you're able to talk to the pharmacist um, who they really are well-educated in their field and can really help you out with understanding a medication. So. Um, just another idea that's not often thought about. So here we have some six steps for how to go about going either to a doctor's appointment or going about the self-advocacy process. So first, you want to be able to identify the issue. And again, like we mentioned in the beginning, you want to note your concerns or any questions you have before going into the doctor's appointment. Or if there's any changes in your medication or any of the treatment you're receiving if there if you need change or need to discuss it further with either a doctor or a pharmacist as we had mentioned and as i said in the beginning you have the right to know your rights whether this is um, being involved and supported when making decisions within with the doctors or any type of healthcare professional you also have the right to choose the least restrictive treatment um, if there is a few suggestions the doctor gives you, but maybe they think one is better than the, than the other one. And you think maybe, oh, this one may be a little less harmful or maybe a little less um, restrictive. And you also, as Alex had mentioned before, you always have the right to see a second opinion, whether that be a second doctor's or maybe some type of alternative health professional. There's always, and the thing is with finding a second opinion, that is something you would have to mention to your doctor. That way they do know you're going to see an alternative um, medical uh, professional to see what you can go about in your health. The third is think of it, thinking about solutions. So what solutions do you think may be best for you? And again, you can talk with a doctor to see kind of what falls where. And that means also be, being willing to compromise um, solutions, whether that's between the two of you. And this is where the healthcare advocate can come in and help determine solutions that may be the best fit for you. Because having these solutions will then kickstart to making a plan and making kind of an action plan, as we had mentioned. 
So as I just said, making a plan. And this is where using that appointment planning sheet that Alex had showed you before can really be helpful and beneficial before making those next step forwards. You also wanna know how you will be expressing your views and whether you're having that healthcare advocate or a family member or a friend come along and kind of help with that process. And you will, at this point, you wanna think about if something that you're setting forward, one of those solutions, if that doesn't happen, what will be the alternative way you'll go about that solution? You wanna make sure at least you have a couple of alternate steps that you may wanna take if something does not go how you had expected it. And this is also another step where the healthcare advocate can assist in any part that is necessary. So enacting the plan, this is just a reminder of why you're doing this and why it is important to you in trying to start those first few steps in your plan. And then reviewing your plan. This is when you have completed the plan, you wanna see what works best and what didn't and what other alternative ways you can go about making those plans. And if you weren't be able to complete any of those steps, whether it be forgetting to ask the doctor something or forgetting to write things down, this is where you can take some time and kind of reflect on what had happened, whether it's in that appointment or on that sheet to kind of move forward into your next steps. So just a reminder, this is where self-advocacy starts with you. And we have a little quote right here that says, put yourself first because nobody else will. And this is how we mentioned, you have to be that one to take those initial steps forward before um, and not having someone else kind of speak up for you. You wanna do it for yourself and why it is important for you and maybe your health. Thank you. So um, you can see here that we have a contact email. So if that appointment planning sheet is something that you're interested in, uh, please go ahead and email us and let us know. We'll send you a copy or you can put your um, information in the chat box. Um, I think because I'm sharing my screen, I'm not sure I can see the chat box just yet, but um, so yeah, we just wanted to open it up for questions. So is there something that you learned today that you would like to implement? Um, is there something that you were hoping we would answer and we didn't? Uh, really, it's an open floor for questions. <laughs> Um, thank you so much. It's Lindsay at the Adult Center. Um, Alexis, if you could send me that um, the appointment plan, I think that would be great. I can share it in one of our emails, if you don't mind. Yes, I can send that. Okay, thank you so much. You're welcome. Was there anything from today's presentation that um, anyone didn't know any topics we went over that you were unsure about from the beginning? Marilyn? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Um, thank you. Your presentation was very good. Oh. I don't know if we can, I don't know if it's just me, but I can't actually hear you, Marilyn. I, I can't hear her either. No, I don't know then. Oh, now we can hear you. Oh. Maybe I have to do this. <laughs> um, I guess I was saying that um, I do try to do most of the things I think that you mentioned, but your list would be making it a little bit more neat, like your list would be helpful for me because 
sometimes I jot these questions down as time goes along, and by the time I get to the appointment, it's a little jumbled. So um, I'll have to remember, and maybe I can get this list from uh, either from you or from Lindsay. So thank you very much. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, the the hope was that because it was all on one page, um, it would just be something easy if you even if you printed off five copies and just kept them somewhere and you thought, you know what, I have that sheet and I have that appointment next week. Let me go grab that and just take some notes that it would just be simple enough, um, but have enough of like a the questions would cause you to think enough that, you know, you would really have everything written down so that when you went into an appointment, you really felt like, all right, I know exactly <laughs> why I'm here and what I want to get out of this. I know the doctor probably has his own agenda, but you know, this is what I need to get out of this for my own benefit. Structure it a little better with your list. <laughs> Good. I'm glad. Yeah. We'll definitely have to share that with you. I'm going to stop sharing my screen quick so I can read the chat here too. Oh yeah. I know. Go ahead. Sorry. Um, I actually don't make a list. I kind of hopefully try to keep it in my head and hope I remember all the questions I wanted to ask my doctor. But I think having a note either in your phone or even on just a little piece of paper and, or even that appointment planning sheet can definitely help remember and jog more questions if you were to have them. And you can always feel free, even if the doctor's talking, feeling, uh, feeling free to write down what they say on either that sheet or another piece of paper that way. You can go home and you're like, oh no, I forgot what they said. But if you have that piece of paper out and the answers, the questions answered, that'll also be very helpful for you. Yeah, and I think, um like Ali said, just the back of the paper would be perfect since it's just one sheet, you could just turn it over and take notes. Um, I did want to mention too, like if you're going to do some of your own research before going to an appointment, um, the CDC is usually a good website, a reputable website to use, um, as well as a lot of websites that are .org. So I know a lot of, and sometimes .gov too is another good one. So you'll find sources that aren't Dot com, which is typically like anyone can pay to have a dot com. <laughs> so that sometimes is a little bit of a red flag. Um, so yeah, just looking again at where the source, what the source is and where they get their information um, is another way to just make sure that the research you're looking at is rep reputable. Anything else? All right, so we will share, um, Lindsay, we'll share that planning sheet with you and then you could pass it along to some folks. And again, and anyone else who wants it, if you want, you can put it in the chat on Zoom or send us an email. Um, we'd be happy to share it with you. So thank well, you, everyone. Much. Thank you for all your work and for, for making this happen virtually. <laughs> so it was great. Thank you for having us. Of course. All right. So Marilyn, just reach out if you have any other questions and we'll get you in contact with them, okay? Okay. Sounds okay, good. good to see you. Bye. 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 Bye.